Stage 8 was a repeat of Stage 2 from the day before, but run in the opposite direction, while the by now infamous water splash stage would once again be called into action to play host to the final battle, but also in the opposite direction. The top 10 were now jockeying for position, and the battle for 10th was a close one. Mike Nathan and Derek Jacobs in their AWI Mitsubishi Lancer were not only in a fight with the Subaru Impreza of Chase Atwell and Brian Carriel for 10th overall, but also for the final step of the production car podium. Nathan started the final day with a slender 10 second advantage, but Young Zimbabwean slowly reeled him in. After stage 5, they drew level, and after stage 7, Atwell had the upper hand by a mere 10 seconds. Both were fighting for their first ever production car podium, and neither was willing to give an inch. But Nathan pulled through on the last minute to beat Atwell by a slender 6 seconds. Uh, lost the daylight. The cars get in right there, they're not losing parts. Unfortunately for Atwell, who flew high, he was excluded after the event for allegedly overtaking taking on solid white lines in an open section. So far, we've heard very little from Ken Subair and Henny Boertes. The Polokwane businessman was only competing in his second event behind the wheel of the Salom Group Volkswagen Palo S2000. To drive an S2000 is no easy task and a steep learning curve, but so far, Hubert is passing with flying colors. He brought the car safely home on the first event in Atoll and got awarded here for another solid drive with a very respectable ninth position overall. The nightmare inside the Total Evolution Toyota Runnings of Fernando Rueda and Kubis Frey continued on day two. After solving the misfire mystery, the Spaniards stopped halfway through stage seven with no gears. And unfortunately now on the hairpin we went from first to second and found neutral and we couldn't get out of neutral. So that's us. Fischer Duplessis and Gerard Sneijman's adventure in the Birkic Subaru was almost over. Duplessis drove hard over the final two stages, but there was nothing he could do about the gap between himself and the leading production car. Duplessis had to settle for eighth. Charles Wilkin and Greg Godrich had another production car win in the bag, but had their sights set on sixth position. Unfortunately for the production car champions, the turbo engine under the bonnet of the Cecil Koenigom and Alta Subaru overheated severely, forcing them to back down on the final stage and to settle for seventh position. Yapi van Niekerk and Robin Houten in their new Africa developments, Toyota Runnings, were awarded for their consistent drive with a generous helping of championship points for sixth. The PP Ultimate pairing of Enzo Keen and Guy Hodgson survived a frustrating weekend to reach the finish in fifth place. Keen isn't used to fifth place finishes and will be determined to once again fight for the lead on the year's remaining events. As the big red L learner driver stick on the back of Mark Cronier and Robert Paisley's Castrol Toyota Auris was made up of tiny square blocks, it will take Cronier some time to peel it off. But what better way to start than with a solid fourth place finish for Toyota on their own event? And my left two over here into right six have a great narrow, right six have a great narrow. With just 44 fast kilometers and two stages to go, a reminder of the tense situation. Habich was leading his teammate Fekin by only three seconds, with Gemmel's Toyota only nine seconds behind the lead. Out of the three leaders, Hergen Fekin and Pierre Aris were the first ones to launch their final round of attacks. The PP Ultimate Polo flew through the penultimate stage eight in a time of nine minutes and 53 seconds. Habich and Judd couldn't afford to give away more than three seconds and recorded a time of nine minutes and 55 seconds. Two seconds slower than Fekin. The lead was now just one single second. But Johnny Gemmel and Peter Maas still had a say. Toyota fans and team bosses were on the edge of their seats as Gemmel crossed the flying finish in a time of 9 minutes and 56 seconds. It seemed that the three-horse race has just become a two-way fight. On the final stage, Gemmel had one last chance to influence the outcome, but halfway through, the Castrol Toyota Auris broke a rear shock absorber, and one got the feeling that his time of 13 minutes and 50 seconds would not be fast enough to have a say in this outcome. And then all hell broke loose. With a single second to make up, Fekin and Aris flew over the final 24 kilometers in a blistering time of 13 minutes and 30 seconds. But would it be enough? With Hubby and Judd still in the stage, Fekin could not leave the end of stage area and waited around to see what his teammate's time would be. Hubby was fast, but would it be fast enough? No, 13 minutes and 38 seconds. The battle is finally settled.
One of the best finishes we've ever seen in Sasol South African rallying, with current champion Fekin taking the win from former champion Habich by only seven seconds. Gemmo's third is enough to remain at the top of the championship standings, a position which he will now have to share with Fekin. The top three on the overall standings are all S2000 machines, while Wilkins' seventh is enough for another production car win. Stefan Wilken takes Class A7 ahead of Hutchison, while Musa gets on the scoreboard with a fine Class A6 win. Sulu got a lucky break in Class A5 to record his second victory of the season over teammate Kleinvan, while Compton put up a great show to claim Class N3. Back at the Toyota finish in Somerset West, it was time for Fekin and Aris to celebrate a hard-won victory. Yeah, look, we, uh, we had a fairly good day yesterday and we were 10 seconds behind this morning and um, we, we gave it a good push in the first stage and we were leading after the first stage and then Danny and Gemmel were with us the whole day and trading times and trading first place all, all the way through. And uh, this last stage, going into the last stage, Johnny was one second ahead of me and we just pushed as hard as possible. Jan Habik fought bravely but was forced to spray the champagne from the second step of the Toyota dealer Cape Rally podium. We had a good go today and then uh, we had a, quite a high jump in, at the beginning of the stage and the nose dug in and the whole radiator got pulled up with sand and it ran a bit hot for the, the remainder of the 20 kilometers and maybe that was just enough to give him a small edge but anyway look it was a good dice and uh, he drove it he didn't drive very well and i think he deserves the win and uh, yeah well done today it might have been from the third step but this was johnny gemmel's second consecutive podium in just two events yesterday it started off nicely for us we finished up leading by four seconds and then this morning we started off got held up in a bit of dust and then a few other little things but uh compliments to them they did it nicely this weekend Another event and another production car win for champion Charles Wilkin and Greg Godrich. Yeah, I'm very happy. It was a good day. Again, we had some issues with the car. Uh, the last stage uh, overheated badly. So, uh, got a misfire on the way back here. So, I think that engine's on its last legs. But we are. Uh, no championship